Let's talk about uh, Kevin Nash and Monty Brown. Their contract renewals are going to be coming due uh, in this era in 06. Who's helping handle that for TNA? Is that you? Is that you and Dixie? Is that someone else? So in 06, it would be, look, I obviously um, was, and I'm trying to think when Dean Broadhead, the CFO, came on board. But we would have to get sort of exacts, but Dallas, we'll call it, from the attorneys to Bob and Janice to the entire budget system, always had to give the final approval. But Dixie would be involved. But from a sort of leading the the negotiation, so to speak, w- would be me. Um, again, we, we've talked uh, here recently a couple of different times about Monty Brown. Um, you know, Monty was a homegrown guy that we wanted to keep. Um, Kevin, on the other hand, was not a homegrown guy. Um, and with his relationship with triple H, triple H and Vince, and, you know, there was always, when is he going back? Is he going to go back? Um, I knew it as well as anybody did Kevin again, 70 miles from his doorstep to universal studios, he could come, but he also, when he would be there, he would, uh, he'd roll his sleeves up and go to work. So, uh, it was a win-win. Let's, um, Let's circle back to Monty Brown. He's losing here because he doesn't have a deal yet. He's sort of playing hokey pokey with what his future is. I mean, Joe's uh, in the match, right? Yeah. So it's all about Joe. It's all, well, it's we're, we, it, for this specific match. There was, we were not going to beat Joe until, and I, <laughs> it was said in the room over and over. We'll know when it's time to beat Joe. And at one time. Well, he, um, I think. He, he's going to be finishing up here because he's going to show up in WWE in November. Gotcha. Uh, chat me up though. You know, you've, I love Bonnie Brown. A lot of our listeners love Bonnie Brown and he, he almost became like that great. What if, mm-hmm. and a lot of us, uh, point the finger at you and say, why wouldn't Jeff just run the ball with him? Why didn't he just make him the guy? Uh, because you had this young, good looking, jacked up, charismatic with a real athletic background that you can capitalize on, you know, from the NFL, blah, blah, blah. It feels like he checks just every possible box and he would be a promoter's dream. And then he doesn't become the top guy and he goes to WWE and it doesn't work out and he's gone. Uh, why didn't we see more with Monty Brown as a top guy in TNA? So that's where I think revision is history. Had we made him the champion, we'd been having a different conversation. He was in main events all the way until he left. He was, if not main event, he was semi-main event. He wasn't ever jerking the curtain once he got going. And I was under a big believer, once you make Monty champion, the chase is over. Then he's going to be two-time or three-time champion. And that first time for him to be the world heavyweight champion And then when we got into contract negotiations and he knew he wanted to see if the grass was greener and the time wasn't right. And I was working with sting and, you know, there was different storylines that were evolved around the belt, but we were always super high on money and always protected him. And, you know, there was a a timeframe. I don't want to say Oh six, maybe Oh five. You better learn how to lose before you learn how to win. And, and, and Monty learned how to do that, 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 that move of the pounce was over. Yeah. His skills were over. He had all the tools in the toolbox and we were going with him. It's not like we didn't go with him. He just didn't become champion. Well, why not? Didn't feel the time was right. And, and when he, when he decides to explore other opportunities, does that come up? Does he come yeah, to you? And- I mean, I, I, again, I think I, I said this at top guy weekend, I could take you. I wonder if it's still there to the bench that me and money, if you walk in the double tree, uh, back in those days, when you walk in the double tree over to the left was the restaurant and bar. But it, before you walked into the front doors, there was park benches over there. Me and money sat on a bench for a couple hours one night. And I basically did everything in my power to get him to resign including telling him, Monty, you know, when the time's right, you're going to be champion, but that's kind of irrelevant. We're not talking, uh, titles and wins and losses. We're talking a financial perspective. 
you have to believe that although you may not make as make money here in your next calendar year, and maybe even in your next calendar year, it's best for your long-term growth. And, and Monty, I don't want to say he didn't want to hear that, but again, Monty had had an NFL career and wasn't. And, and that NFL career ended. So he knew, hey, one bad gotta, match or move, I could, this could be over. That, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, again, he wanted to see the grass was going to be greener and you couldn't blame him for that either. No. What was your advice whenever you had a guy like a Monty Brown? who was going to the WWE. I mean, you know, listen, obviously you're, you're going to try to do what's best for you and your family. And you're going to try to sell them on staying. And they know that, but at the same time, they also know, well, Jeff's been there more than once. Did you ever have? Yes, sir. Great question. And I, and this is something that, you know, in life experiences and when you're sitting across the table from a guy selling mortgages and you've got at this point, 18 years of, of, of experiences, so to speak. Hey, I remember there was this school teacher in so-and-so years that we refinanced and two years later, he came back to us again because he'd got an increase in pay and he's no longer teaching. He's doing this. You've got all these different stories of experiences of success. Yeah. And you pull on that to say, Hey, you don't have to believe me, but let me tell you a story. I could look at Monty and others and say, here's the real deal. The Crockett's wanted me in 1990 to go to WCW. That's the truth. And I was probably making what's 800 bucks a week, Conrad. So anyway, less than 50 grand a year. Yeah. Yeah. And then my picture money and I'm going to Dallas. (laughs) Look at you chuckling. Uh, I'm going to Dallas anyway. So, so my career from 86 to 90, was look, I was tickled to death. It was my college education, but I wasn't making a ton of money. Right. Here I got this opportunity. I can go to WCW and make, oh my God, 104 to 156. Whoa, yeah. But guess what? My father had the foresight and the experience to say, you ain't ready. And I didn't like it, but I held off for two more years. And then all of a sudden, Vince McMahon, brings me up, have a couple of matches. I'm seasoned. I can do this. I can do that. I look better. I talk better. I get blessed with brother love and we shoot some vignettes, but the character that I stepped into and the role that I played, I was even in, you know, it it, maybe not nowadays, but in those days I was fast tracked to the main events. And, And so I could tell guys like Amani, Monty, I don't mean this out of disrespect, but you ain't ready to carry the ball by yourself. You're just not. And I meant it sincerely, but also out of a long-term career. Because, look, the proof's in the pudding. Monty went to WWE. You can slice and dice it all you want. He failed miserably. Chris Harris failed miserably. I mean, there's guys that got up there, and you can point the fingers all you want. They didn't succeed. Wow. Right. I mean, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, we're talking about money. He had his opportunity. He did. Why didn't he succeed? Well, he wasn't there very long before uh-huh. he, deci- he wasn't there very long before he decided to, uh, go home and take care of his family. But I'm with you, you know, maybe he would have made a different choice had things been going a little differently for him. Yeah. And, and, and you, we don't know, but yeah. I, I am the biggest Monty Brown supporter. And there was a time in this frame that we're talking about when the pounce and Monty skills, I don't want to get too far out of bounds and say the hottest thing in the industry, but he certainly, he was over the most surefire bet that in the next 36 months, is this guy going to be a top star? You would have said absolutely question. I'm not saying 12 months. I'm saying 36 months. I think Amani would have been at every, every, he would be at the top of everyone's list. You know, I'm glad we're getting granular here because I do feel like you sort of just glossed over it earlier when I was like, well, maybe if he would have been the champion, maybe he wouldn't have been looking to make a decision to go somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of things to consider there. On the one hand, you don't want to put the belt on somebody who might be leaving. You want to go ahead and continue to build equity in someone who's sticking around. That makes sense. 
Yep. On the other hand, though, you also want to, you know, tell the best story. And you felt like, well, the, the money and the best angle for this story is for him not to win it. But you also have to serve another master here of we got to keep this guy placated. We got to keep him on the roster. We got to keep him wearing our jersey. Do you feel like in hindsight, if you had it to do over again, if you would have found a way to position him, not only in the main events, but as the top guy and the champion, that it would have been a little easier for you to make that sell and get that commitment from him to keep him longer. Uh, and would his career have played out any differently if you would have been able to do so? So the question, I want to make sure I answer your question. Should I have made him go on and take that final step, made him champion? In hindsight, yeah. do you think if you had it to do over again, and I know you were making, I believe everybody understands that everyone listening to this and, and even you and I, we make our decisions based uh, as best we can based on the information we have at the time. But now you and I get to sort of armchair quarterback and look back with the benefit of hindsight. Do you wonder in these handful of years where you had him before he went to the WWE, if you would have made him the top guy. And in order to do that, you could have gotten a more long-term commitment from him that his wrestling career would have turned out much differently. I, you- I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that I, if I would have told him I'm going to make you champion, he would have stayed. I, I think, I think that's given, uh, uh, not given Monty enough brains credit. Like he's a mark for the belt. I don't think if I would have said Monty, look, I can't pay you, but I'm going to make you champion. Oh, okay. I'm staying. Uh, sign me up. I mean, but well, I'm not that, trying to imply that. That. That, being said, that being said, I will say this as I sat here, sit here today, 16 years later, Conrad, the amount of decisions that I made that I made that I wrapped myself around the axle, not once, not twice, not three times, thinking that it's so critical and so important. And I believed it with all my passion and everything. When in reality, it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, it, it just wasn't that big a deal. And guess what? If it wasn't a big a deal, I always said, oh, no, the fans. At the end of the day, and look, me and you are both biggest wrestling fans in the world. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a decision that we watch on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday night, or on Sunday, once a month, where we go, whoop, he's champion this month. Wait, you mean to tell me Monty Brown is champion this month and next month? He's not, because that was my fear. That was my fear in that, okay, we're going to make Monty a champion, but man, he's going to go through opponents quick, and he just can't beat all the heels. We're not, we don't have enough heels ready. Just that whole uh, domino effect of, okay, Monty, you're going to be champion month one, and then you can get in a rematch and he, you can win again. And then this, but dude, you're going to run out of opponents and people don't pay to see a baby face lose. They pay to see a baby face win and just going down that whole rabbit hole. But man, Conrad, the amount of decisions I've made that I've let myself get wrapped around the axle, we could talk for the next 20 episodes of I screwed up. Well, I mean, that's, that's what we're doing this for. And I'm glad we did such a deep sidebar and I'm sure we'll talk about money, you know, a lot more in the future, but real quick, before we move on, I want to draw another analogy. I've heard an old guy talking to me once when he's near the end of his life, not a wrestling person, but he's just, and he talked about this, this one lady in his life and he didn't ultimately marry her and he went his way and she went hers. And he referred to her as the one that got away. Yo, when you look back at TNA, do you consider Monty Brown to be one of the ones that got away? Oh, I, I, I thought you were going to say, is he the one, but he's certainly, I don't even want to give it a top three or top five, but yes, he is good analogy. See, this is your creativity. You, <laughs> you light it up, but no, that's, that, that's well said in that the, what if. Because look, um, when, when I look back on the body of work creatively, obviously AJ Styles is at the very top. Uh, Samoa Joe's at the very top. There was a time when you look at America's most wanted, you know, and beer money and the X division as a whole, some things that I'm pretty proud of. Sure. Perspective had me and Monty have said, Hey man, let's just give it a shot. And I can't remember if, 
the Carters wanted me to not sign him at this dollar and I'm trying to get him at that dollar because that's most of the time how it went or Dean brought in. Let's give him a little extra money and he's worth it. Then. But no, he's only, that means he's going to jump from, you know, we're, we're jumping him 300%. I don't give a shit. He's earned it. He's one of our guys. That whole, that whole conversation. But, but yes, the one that, one of the, one of the ones that got away, Monty's at the very top of that list.